Dear readers, welcome to our channel. Have we ever wondered how Huawei successfully navigated around the US chip sanctions, continuing to drive the 5G revolution in this technological chess game? Is chip technology just the tip of the iceberg, and have we all underestimated Huawei's capabilities? In this era of information explosion, have we considered how Huawei quietly broke through in areas such as electric cars and base station equipment, making a mark in the global tech landscape, foreign media, including some commentators from Reuters in the UK, believe that Huawei's Mate 60 Pro has dealt a significant blow to the US technology sanctions. Disassembling and testing the Huawei Mate 60 Pro, they found the chip's performance to be excellent. Bloomberg's commentary suggests that, to some extent, this indicates the ineffectiveness of US technological sanctions. Huawei was once the world's best-selling smartphone brand. To suppress Huawei, the US began prohibiting the sale of chips below 7 nanometers. Chips below 7 nanometers are not widely used, mainly in smartphones and tablets. After the chip supply was cut off, Huawei could no longer produce 5G phones. However, Huawei has continued to launch 5G phones, proving that at least US chip control in this field is ineffective against China. Huawei's path is successful and it overcomes the challenges of producing 7 nanometer domestic chips. It means the West loses another card for effective technological sanctions. After currently banning semiconductor chips, the next step could be banning semiconductor equipment and designs, eventually extending to industrial software. In such a situation, the tighter the US squeezes, the greater the progress China may make under pressure. Huawei has been underestimated by everyone. Besides smartphones, Huawei is the largest supplier of base station equipment, crucial for 5G and 4G. Without base stations, smartphones are essentially useless. So, even though Huawei hasn't supplied 5G phones in these three years, its sales in other areas have been decent allowing Huawei to endure, therefore, in global tech competition, excessive reliance on sanctions and embargoes may not be a wise move. Technological advancements often find ways to cope, and sanctions may stimulate a sanctioned country's stronger drive for independent innovation. The US technology blockade against Huawei has, to some extent, accelerated China's independent development in the semiconductor field. This might be a key variable in the future global tech landscape. It also reminds other countries to use technological sanctions more cautiously to avoid stimulating the technological rise of the sanctioned country. Huawei has made significant breakthroughs in the electric car sector, injecting vitality into the Chinese electric vehicle market. Huawei provides the entire electronic control system for brands like BMW, contributing to the immense success of BMW electric cars in China, Europe, and the US. For instance, BMW, lacking its electronic control system, had to collaborate with Chinese companies. After trying several central control systems, the one they found most effective was provided by Huawei. Huawei is an incredibly comprehensive tech company, with a major focus on industrial software. Industrial software forms the basis of industry, and Huawei's 5G devices are primarily used not for gaming and downloading apps among the general public, but in mines, ports, and factories. Chips are only a small part of the entire electronic communication field, and in recent years, China's technological development has been exceptionally rapid. The small courtyard, high wall policy couldn't contain China's growth. The US, feeling unable to suppress it, decided not to reflect on the ineffectiveness of technology embargoes. Instead, they want to enlarge the courtyard further, increasing the control over more technologies. They prohibit any cooperation between these technologies in China and the sale of any products related to these technologies to China. The US hopes to use this method to curb China's future development. However, this is unlikely to succeed because human technology has always had various paths, entirely capable of achieving the same results through different technologies. This compels China and other countries to make efforts in various aspects. Semiconductor chips are not the final product, they must be installed in smartphones and computers for the chip to function. However, 
The main countries producing computers and smartphones are in China. So, when the U.S. used to sell chips to China, it was an excellent opportunity for U.S. semiconductor companies. After making profits, they could invest in R&D, maintaining technological leadership in this field. It was supposed to be a virtuous cycle, but the U.S. cut off this cycle, leading to problems with these chips. The direct consequence of the U.S. Banning chip sales to China is a significant drop in U.S. chip prices. They can't sell, and they don't know who to sell to. Alongside the sharp decline in chip prices, the stock prices of these chip companies have also fallen. It proves that technological embargoes are ineffective, meaning Chinese technology companies are even more competitive. In the chip market, China used to be the main buyer. Now, the situation is reversed. China can produce chips itself and sell them to the global market. If Chinese chips have good quality and low prices, they will push U.S. semiconductor products entirely out of the market. So, Americans are very worried. The U.S. Semiconductor Association once wrote a report to the U.S. government, warning them not to play with fire on the chip issue. The conclusion of the report is very pessimistic. In five to ten years, the U.S. semiconductor industry may not exist. Once China produces semiconductor chips and competes with the U.S., it may squeeze out the U.S. market share. The logic of the Semiconductor Association is clear. China is the largest semiconductor chip market. If the U.S. bans the sale of semiconductor chips to China, it will cause a decline in U.S. corporate profits, a decrease in R&D capabilities, and will impact the future development of semiconductors. In turn, the U.S. has cultivated a competitor. If China has to produce semiconductors on its own, it might end up squeezing the U.S. out of the global market. Why hasn't the development of chips in China been so rapid? Because it is an industry that requires high investment, substantial capital, and long-term investment, with ultimately not very substantial profits. In the 1980s and 1990s, China was laying the groundwork for the semiconductor industry. During the process of globalization, chips could be easily bought, and manufacturers were unwilling to spend so much money on investments because it wasn't economically viable. China could easily obtain these products, so it neglected the semiconductor industry. When the U.S. found that chips seemed to be China's weakness, they took this card and forced China to shore up its technological shortcomings. The U.S. not only wants to ban chips from China, but also wants to ban all equipment for making chips and the entire semiconductor design. These devices were the result of many years of accumulated research and development. For example, the photolithography machine is very complex, with over tens of thousands of small parts, and was a product of international cooperation in the past. Huawei's chip emergence is not accidental. It is the result of integration from various aspects. This indicates that China has made some progress in these areas. I end conclusion. The video summarizes the story of Huawei's counterattack, hoping readers gain insights and reflections. In this tale of Huawei's resurgence, we see a series of challenges and reflections on the part of the U.S. in technological competition. Firstly. The U.S. approach to implementing chip technology sanctions against Huawei has prompted deep reflection. This single means of technological blockade has had a negative impact on the global tech ecosystem. It not only causes the U.S. to lose its place in global tech innovation cooperation, but also fails to achieve the expected results. Secondly, the story of Huawei's counterattack reminds the U.S. to pay more attention to local innovation and tech education. Relying solely on technological blockades to curb the technological rise of other countries is not a long-term solution. Instead, the U.S. should invest more in local innovation, promote the improvement of tech education, and cultivate more tech talents to ensure the country maintains a leading position in global tech competition. Additionally, the measures the U.S. has taken regarding Huawei require more caution and thoroughness. A single technological blockade may provoke countermeasures, and this mutual sanctioning situation doesn't align with the trend of global tech cooperation. The U.S. needs to focus more on dialogue and cooperation with other countries, jointly formulating rules and standards for tech development, 
to establish a more open and inclusive tech ecosystem. Lastly, Huawei's counterattack experience reminds the US to break free from narrow zero sum game thinking. In the era of globalization, the principles of tech cooperation and mutual benefit are more in line with the trend. Through collaboration with other countries, global tech prosperity can be promoted, rather than attempting to hinder the development of other countries through a single means. Today's video ends here. Please stay tuned for the next exciting content. Goodbye. Goodbye.